under these assumptions, we can write down a very similar set of equations that describes the flow inside the boundary layer. So the thin layer approximation, layer approximation in 3D. Okay, so we still have our partial u partial x plus partial v partial y, but now plus partial w partial z equal to zero. That's our mass conservation. And in here, we have a again a lucky cancellation because v is very small, it's much smaller than u and w, but partial partial y is much bigger than partial partial x and partial partial z, right? So all these three terms can be on the same order of magnitude. Therefore, we keep everything in the mass conservation equation. Now, in the momentum conservation equation, in order to simplify it, we want to derive also what is the pressure gradient in the momentum conservation equation. And the pressure gradient, just like in the two-dimensional case, can be can be converted into a velocity gradient outside the boundary layer. Because just as in the 2D boundary layer case, the pressure variation inside the boundary layer is very small. The pressure variation when you go normal to the surface is very small because the V velocity is very small. So you can write partial, partial P, uh, partial X, is going to be equal to if you just look at the velocity outside the boundary layer is equal to uh i think you get a you get a minus sign minus partial p partial x would be equal to rho of ue times partial ue partial x and then we need to add another term that is this is the x direction uh, pressure gradient so, but we also need a we times partial ue partial z, right? So, advection of velocity in both x and z direction. And the minus partial p partial z, the same thing uh, here, but partial we plus rho we partial we partial z. So, with these two terms, we plug in into the Navier-Stokes equation, and also in the viscous uh, in the viscous equations, we only consider in the viscous term we only consider the y-directional derivative. So what we get is rho u of partial u partial x. This is the uh, rho v of partial u partial y plus rho w partial u partial z is equal to the pressure gradient which we exchange into these outside velocity forms. And the viscous term is only retained in the y direction. It's only so only the y derivative in the viscous terms are retained. Okay. And also we have uh, not u anymore. We have also the W direction equation. And as you can see here, U and W are basically satisfying very similar equations. Right? So so if you look at if you see any U, you replace this U with W and also you replace UE with WE you likely to have a correct equation, right? So here is zy dy. So in many cases, that is the motivation of why we are using this vector q to denote the u and w components of the velocity. And we will also introduce notations, for example, Whenever we have a gradient in the x direction in the two-dimensional case, we may have a divergence or gradient in the x and z directions, right? So we may introduce, for example, divergence. We will introduce this 
divergence uh, tilde of Q, for example. So this is new notation. Now it's defined as partial partial x of the x directional velocity plus partial partial z of the z directional velocity, right? So here, the conservation of mass equation can be then written as divergence tilde of Q plus partial V partial Y is equal to zero, for example. And you can write all these equations into vector form, except except for these are no longer, these are not like Navier-Stokes equation, it's a, not a three-dimensional vector form, but a two-dimensional vector form. The vector you get are vectors that you can consider that is always tangential to any three-dimensional surface you have. All right, any questions? So this is only for the local, the, the coordinates are changing. The coordinates are, uh, th these are for local systems and the coordinates are, yeah, the definition of X and Z are changing as you move along the surface because right. the, the surface is usually curved, right? Yeah, that's right. And so it's, yeah. Is, is there like a global governing equation? Because this doesn't seem to, well, I, I guess, how do you incorporate the change in the coordinate system? So, so here we are writing down an equation that is, lo that is correct for, for a local patch, okay. right? Where, where you have a consistent definition of x and z direction over the patch. In, so, and, and this equation would be correct if you have like, a, for example, a sphere, right? And uh, you can have a global definition of x and z in this, in this form. But if you have a surface other than a sphere, you may have to have uh, two different or many different local patches. and. Uh, Basically, in the overlapping region, you have to say, okay, this, these two sets of equations are both satisfied where these two sets of equations are under these two different coordinates. And you have to have a change of coordinates in the overlap region. So that's one way to deal with it. Another way to deal with it is to derive a global coordinate system that are no longer orthonormal. Right, so if you derive a coordinate, coordinate system that are not, not orthonormal, then, then all of these derivatives has to be modified, right? So uh, the, for example, the divergence is no longer just a, a summation of two derivatives. Oh, and by the way, even, even for a sphere, they are orthogonal, but the coordinates are not orthonormal because the length of these, uh, the, the length of the vector changes, right? If you have a sphere, so on the so let's say on the equator your let's say this is your dx this is your dz on the equator your dx is longer than near the pole so you, you still have to transform the equation but it's a lot easier to transform but in some other system in, in, in some other surfaces it may not even be feasible to write a set of coordinate systems that are orthogonal so you have to also have non-orthogonal coordinate systems if you want to solve a global PDE. And then you, you need to transform this. So, so the math behind all, all of these are, uh, I think if you, if, you, uh, if you took 920, I think we, we discussed the transformation of coordinate systems early in the uh, infinite difference, right? But like th this, is a, uh, this is basically the step after you drive the PDEs and uh, figure out how to solve them.